Hi, today we're going to be tying the stretch tubing scud. The stretch tubing scud isn't an insect per se, but it is a freshwater crustacean, also known as the freshwater shrimp, like you see here. This will be our imitation today. We're going to be using a size 14 scud hook, and you can see from the shape of the hook that it looks very much like our little crustacean friend there. We're all going to be adding a 764th nickel um, bead to the end of it. Once you get that on your hook, you can then mash your barb like we're doing here, and then secure the hook in your vise. I just give the vise a couple little twangs on the end to make sure that it's secured. Nothing worse than having your fly or your hook come loose from the vise as you're tying. It's kind of be very frustrating. So we're going to add our 140 denier tan UTC thread to this. We're going to wrap this down the shank. We're going to go past the bend of the hook like that. We're going to come in here. We're going to move our thread back to the bead. We're going to come in with our scissors and cut off our tag end. All right, like that. And we're going to add our stretch tubing. We only need about two inches of stretch tubing, so pull two inches out and cut it off. That's more than you need, actually, but if you do anything less, it makes it really hard to grab a hold of as you're spinning it around the shank of the hook. So attach that to the hook, like this. You're going to pull it back a little bit, so it's just inside the bead. Secure it down. We're going to wrap this down the top of the shank. Once we get back toward the end, we're going to let thread torque move that over to the other side of the hook. And then we're going to wrap this back down. Now we're going to create our body. And we want a tapered body that tapers from the back to the front. You'll see here that my thread is cording up, which means it's not giving us a very flat body, which isn't all that important on this because we are going to be covering it with tubing. But you can see here how it has corded up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin my bobbin counterclockwise. This flattens out my thread so that I can have a smoother body. Uh, this is important on different patterns. Zebra midge comes to mind. You can see how the thread has bound up here. I'm going to spin it again counterclockwise, and you'll see how that flattens my thread out. This is good to know as we, uh, when you tie other flies, again, not this one so much, but when you're tying something like the zebra midge, you want a nice flat body. Uh, fish probably don't mind, but um, it makes it look nicer, something like this on my Christmas presentation fly for this year. The body is nice and smooth. That's kind of what you want when you're tying a zebra midge. All right, so now that we have the body like we want it, we're going to take our stretch tubing and we're going to stretch it and wrap it around the body of the, um, our crustacean here. Move it up the body, and you're going to pull tight, flatten that tubing out, but you want to make sure you hold on as you switch hands, because if you don't, this is what can happen. This is not the end of the world. It actually uh, may happen a few times for the people who are you're tying with. It's a good opportunity to, uh, oh, just to talk about the do-overs and the redos that we have to do and the not to get frustrated when these things happen. Which species of fish lays the most eggs? The ocean sunfish, the squirrel fish, the trigger fish, salmon, or hummingbird? Pause now until you decide together in an answer. The correct answer is ocean sunfish, which can lay up to 3 million eggs. So we're going to move it to the bead. And once we get to the bead, there's a little technique I'm going to show you um, to tie this down. Most people will actually drop the bobbin over the top of the fly, but we don't really need to do that. We're just going to switch places. Take the thread where the thread is. We're going to move it over where the stretch tubing is. And then back. And then we're going to go over the top. And now it's secure. We're going to do that a couple times. Like that. And do it two or three more times until you feel like the tubing is nice and tight on there. Do it one more time. I can get a hold of it. Flip it over. Now we're going to stretch the tubing as we cut it. Now I want to make sure we don't cut the thread also, but pull the tubing and that tubing should suck up into the fly just a little bit. All right, pause here and talk about the question you decided on. Remember to be attentive as you listen and honest as you answer. 
Take your time and then continue when you're finished. Wrap it down a few times and should be good to go. Now I, right here when I'm tying I usually will add a drop of head cement to everybody's fly or have them do it and then it's a good time for us to talk about questions, maybe a trivia question. But what that does is secures the thread on there so it doesn't come unwound when we do our finish. And this happens sometimes with our new tires and it can be very frustrating. So I'm going to do a half, half hitch onto this. I'm going to come in with my whip finishing tool, also known as the instrument of torture to my students. And we're going to do a whip finish on it. You can lay that thread where you want. I'm going to wrap it up the bead a little bit, which makes it prettier. Come in, secure that down, tighten it down. And come in with my scissors and cut it off. We're going to add our um, head cement. You can see that stuff gets stuck to just about everything I tie with because of that head cement. So I'm going to pull that off of there. Didn't quite get it off, but oh well, it is what it is. And we are going to add our head cement. We're going to smooth that down. And now we have our stretch tubing scud. I'm going to show you now in this little next little section on what happens if you don't put head cement on the fly prior to doing your half hitches. So we got our stretch tubing scud done. I'm going to come in with a half hitch tool and I'm going to do three half hitches. You can already see that the thread kind of moves around. Okay, this is a little more secure. We got to do one more. All right, push it off there and then tighten it down. So I tighten it down. I come in with my scissors and I cut it. But there's a little bit that I need to cut more. And you'll see, watch the thread when I move my scissors in here. That thread unwinds. Now this can be saved through using uh, you know, head cement or super glue, but it doesn't make for a very secure fly and it also is really kind of disappointing to the people who are tying. So I would recommend using the head cement prior to adding your half hitches if that's what you're going to use as a half hitch tool. So that's it. I hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching.